Good morning. Oh, I am live. I'm hot there. <laughs> Not that I'm hot. I'm just saying the mic's hot. But anyway, uh, everyone excited today? Everyone excited to hear the Word of God? Amen. Amen. Yeah. God is good. I want to just say hi to Al and Peg. Is, is Peg here? Just Al? She's out. She left. So, yeah. Al's our missionary from China, Al Horton, with OTAN. So can we give him a clap here and say welcome? Good to see you. And his wife Peg, is, is she, she's not here? She's... Oh, she's out. She's out. In the, she saw me preaching. She's gone. So anyway, no, I'm just kidding. But good to see you, Al. Um, if you're a Bible, please turn with me to Daniel chapter 2, verse 12. Daniel chapter 2, verse 12. And also, I appreciate if you pray about these windows, because uh, it's been an ordeal. And uh, um, we just, we found out from the Register of Contractors that they aren't a licensed contract. They say they are, but they're not. And so um, it could be the Lord doing the allowing this because if they're not, then the licensed registered contractor said that they have to pay for someone else to put the windows in right. So how many of that would be a good deal for us? And uh, so, and we've sure gone through the business. We feel bad for them, but I don't feel bad for them because we paid good money for tempered glass and they put regular glass back in. And that was the thing we replaced because it was cracking. And so how many know God doesn't like scammers? Amen. So, uh, yeah, I was be quiet before I get in trouble. But anyways, um, Daniel chapter 2, verse 12. And the title of today's message is, The God Who Reveals Secrets. And not that he reveals your secrets like he tells on you, but he reveals secrets of dreams. How many know the Bible says, I believe it's uh, Hebrews 4.13, that everything is laid bare before the Holy Spirit to whom he must give an account? How many know that? Everything you do, I love what people say. They say integrity is doing the right thing when nobody's watching. But how many know that there's always somebody watching and that person is the loving eyes of God? So if you believe that, if you believe what the Word says, then you should always be living right because you know the holy eyes of God are watching. Amen? Amen? And, and sometimes we worry more about what other people sinful eyes see. <laughs> How many know you're a sinner? I'm a sinner. But we should worry more about or be concerned more about what God sees and live for Him. But anyways, He reveals the secrets. We're going to see the secret dream of King Nebuchadnezzar. As we saw last week that King Nebi, that's what I'm calling him, King Nebi was freaked out by his dream that he had, and he wanted uh, his so-called wise men, the Chaldeans, to tell him his dream and interpret it to him. But the Chaldeans said that this request was impossible for any man. And I love this because, as we're going to see later, what's impossible for man is possible with God. Amen? And we're going to see that, yeah, it's impossible with, with man, and it's impossible even with the devil, and his people that are following him, his astrologers, his, his magicians, his soothsayers, his, his warlocks and witches. But it's not impossible for God because God knows all things. How many, how many feel secure about that, that God, know, God knows all things? You know, I was telling you, my wife got diagnosed with cancer. And we're believing God for it, we're, for healing, and we're praying. But how many know this? That sometimes when you hear those things, you kind of panic a little. You can feel that, that fear, the temptation to go, God, you know, I don't think anyone goes, this is a great time for cancer right now. I, I mean, you just kind of get hit, and it kind of freaks you out. And, and I know what that's like. I, got it, I had it on my face from skin cancer. And, but, but how many know this is that God sees the whole thing, the beginning and the end. He sees the beginning of creation, and he sees the end of creation all at once, right? He's with Adam and Eve, and he's with us, and he's seen our whole life. And how many know, if we know that, then we know he's got the answer. Amen. And all we have to do is trust him in the midst of our struggle and see his blessing through our pain, amen? To say, God, I trust you, and I know you're good. And that's the key. I think, I think the key in this, I've said to my wife, I want us, I believe that nothing happens to us except what God allows, but God allows trials to refine us, Amen? The testing of our faith, it refines us. It teaches us patience. It teaches us endurance. And we're to see God in the midst of it to say, God, I want to learn all that you want me to learn through this, and I want to pass the test in trusting you through it. Amen? And we're going to praise him no matter what. I love what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, that you can deliver us, our God can deliver us from the fire, but if he doesn't, we're still, going to, we're still not going to bow our knee to you, and we're going to trust God for divine healing. We're believing that. But if, if he chooses to go through a doctor, we're going to still praise and trust him that way also. Amen. 
Well, let's pray and ask God to continue to speak to us today. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love. And I ask right now that, Lord, this wouldn't just be another teaching, but I pray that your Holy Spirit would anoint me. That, Father, it wouldn't be for me to feel good that oh, I taught something that impressed people, but really I pray that I would have your heart that I would want your people to hear from you. I would want your people to be ministered to and encouraged and built up and strengthened and equipped for your work that you have for them, the ministry. Lord, that's our job. That's my job as a pastor, the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Lord, may your people not just be fed and like the Dead Sea just taking in, but Lord, may they take in your word, take in your truth, and then give that truth away in their workplaces, in their schools, at the gym, at the at the Circle K. So Lord, I ask that right now you would speak and that there would be a rhema word. It wouldn't just be the logos, but it'd be a rhema word that a specific word for a specific people at a specific time that they would say, surely God is in your midst. Not because of me, but because your Holy Spirit spoke through your word. So Father, touch every heart, speak to every mind, and Lord, soften every heart. Any heart here today that is kind of frustrated with you or angry or saying, why God? I pray today they would leave here knowing that you are good and that you are faithful and true and that you are for them. And if you are for them, who can be against them? The answer is no one. And no one can separate them from your love except them. So Lord, may every person leave here knowing with all their heart they're loved by you and that they would return that love back to you in worship. Bless your people and speak to us, we ask humbly, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone agreed, said... Excuse me, I didn't hear you. Did you say that? Amen. amen. There we go. All right. I got that. I heard a worship leader say that today when someone said amen. They went, excuse me, did you say something? I didn't, I didn't hear you. So I wanted to try that out. But anyways, verse 12 of Daniel chapter 2. For this reason the king was angry and very furious and gave the command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Is As I said last week, is there anything to tarot cards and astrology and palm reading? And as I said to you, yes, there is. Because there's, but there's only two powers in the world, right? There's only God's power, and then there's demonic power. Now, Satan's power has a lot of different names, right? New Age, Satanism, the occult, uh, astrology, palm reading, you name it. You know, what else? I forget anything, whatever. What? Scientology. Scientology, all kinds of things. But guess what? All of it is demonic. If there's any spiritual power that is not of God, it's what? Demonic. And so the devil is in them, and that's why we are to stay away from them, as it says throughout the Word, and especially in Deuteronomy. The Bible says very clearly that spiritual power that is not of God has no place in our lives as believers. Because the enemy uses it to get a hook into our lives. Because I said last week, what happens is the demonic will tell you something of your past because they'll kind of, the spiritist will summon a demon and they'll tell you something of your past and you go, whoa, how do they know that? And then they'll try to say something of your future. They'll try, now they don't know your future, but they'll try to say something and then orchestrate it. So it's very good not to get information from the devil. How many know that? How many know his, 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 his goal for your life is not a good goal, as we'll see in a second? Because the enemy uses that to hook us and it gets involved in realms of the demonic. And we need to stay away from it because it always leads to what? Death. John 10.10 10 says this. Jesus says, I've come that you might have what? Life. And life more abundantly, or life to the fullest. How many like to have life, right? We all want life. I don't think anyone says, hey, sign me up for some good death. No, no one says that. But hear this. But the thief, Satan, comes only to steal to kill and destroy. Now, he will smile and look nice at the beginning. Amen? How many remember that? Anyone remember your old party days before Jesus? Right? It looked good until the check came around. Right? Until you saw how costly sin was, how painful it was. It looks good on the front end, but in the back end, it brings always death. It steals from you. It kills you. It destroys you. So that we, as the people of God, should want nothing to do with those kind of things. And I've told you, sadly, I mean, I was working at the La Paloma the hotel, and they had someone reading palms and doing tea leaves and, and tarot cards. And I saw a Christian from another Calvary do, saying, hey, you know, doing this. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, it's just fun, good fun. 
There's no good and there's no fun in it, right? It's, it's a lie. And so run from that if you ever see it and pray maybe that it would be bound and stopped in Jesus' name. Having said this, <clears throat> there is a tremendous, hear this, even though Satan has some power limited, his demons can only, Satan has limited power and his demons can only actually do, they can't do a whole lot. They couldn't remember his men, Satan's men, the, the, the soothsayers, the magicians, they could not answer Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Remember they said last week, there is no man that can do this. The, only the gods can do this, and they don't dwell in flesh. Nobody can do this. And Nebuchadnezzar said, I don't care. If you're on my payroll, you be worth your salt, and you tell me, he said, and then he did this. He said, tell me my dream, and not just my dream, tell me it, but then give me the interpretation. How many know that is a good way to test if, you're, if, you're, if your soothsayers are really, or your witch doctors, whatever you want to call it, are saying the real thing? Because if they can tell your dream, that's pretty good. But what do you know? They couldn't tell the dream, but they were going to say, you tell me the dream, and I'll put a spin on it. How many know it's really easy for someone to spin it? I tell you, these fortune teller people, they'll say, so uh, did you ever have uh, pain in your life? <laughs> you know, oh, no, how did you know? You know what I mean? Come on. You know, have you ever gotten a traffic ticket? You are, how do you know this stuff? This is amazing. Right? We help them along a lot of times. They don't really guess. And have you ever seen it when they guess? You have, a, you have an aunt, and her, her initial was A, B, C, D. D, how did you know? You know what I mean? And you just go, come on. You know, it's just ridiculous. I don't know if you've ever seen the shows. I've watched them a little bit just to see. They say their accuracy is about as good as us guessing most of the time. Now, hear me. There are some people that really are spiritists, but I mean, a lot of it is just a scam in the name of spiritism. But anyway... They couldn't interpret the dream, so Nebi is getting mad. Verse 13. So the decree went out, and they began killing the wise men. I mean, no, that's, that'll make you wish you, were, you weren't working for the devil. Killing the wise men, and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them, because Daniel wasn't part of these demonic wise men, but he was part of the, the people trained to be leadership, and so he is now going to be killed too if something doesn't happen. Verse 14. With... Then with counsel and wisdom, Daniel answered Arioch and the captain of the king's guard who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. Because of the failure of the Chaldeans, these wise men, who were, as I said, of Babylon, their failure to tell Nebuchadnezzar his dream, now all the wise men of Babylon, including Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his friends, they're going to be killed now. How many know that's a bummer, right? When you're not part of these bad guys, and yet now the king's so mad, and that's back in his day, he had absolute power. He could just say, kill you, didn't have to go to trial. He could just say, you're dead, and they would kill you. Remember we said they'd tear your arms off, right? They'd put you on trees, and then whoosh, the trees would snap, tear your limbs off, and then they would per- turn your house into a pile of rubble and burn it and leave it like a smoldering heap so that everyone knows this is what happens to those that go against the king. How many know that could make people say, Yes, king, whatever you want, king, right? And so that's what they, so Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are going, whoa, what's going on? How come we're part of this? You know, this is a bummer. Verse 15, he answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree from the king so urgent? Or why is he so rash? Why is he just all of a sudden throwing us in here, basically? Then Arioch made a decision, made the decision known to Daniel. Verse 16, So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Now hear this, this is cool. Daniel asked for permission to speak to the king. And he says, give me more time and I'll tell your dream and I'll tell you its interpretation. Now here's what's really cool. If you remember last week that that Nebi did not give his astrologers more time. They said, give us time, give us time. And they were stalling. He goes, you guys are stalling. And he could tell. So, so you kind of can infer that they've already let him down in, in a lot of times. So King Nebuchadnezzar is kind of saying, I don't think you guys are really are worth your salt. You're not really worth what you say you are. You can't really interpret things. But hear this. He gave Daniel more time. He gave Daniel more time. Why? Why did he give Daniel more time? Because I believe the favor of God was on Daniel. How many of you would like the favor of God on your life? 
Does anyone here say, I don't want favor, right? All of us want favor at our work. We want favor with our children. We want favor when we go to the store. We want favor when we go try to get a deal, right? We want favor, right? I want favor with these windows. I don't want to have to pay for, for cheap windows. We want favor wherever we go. Well, hear this. I want us to hear. I've said these verses a lot of times, but how many know sometimes we hear verses, but they really don't get into our, our spirit or into our soul like they should. But I want you to hear this verse because I believe it's good for us and it's good for America. It's good for the American church. And it's 1 Samuel 2.30. You've heard me say it many times. Those who honor me, God says, I will what? Honor. How many of you want God to honor you? All of us. But here's what God says. There's a condition. He says, honor me. A lot of us want God's favor. I've said this many times. A lot of us want God's, you know, when someone's sick or a kid gets in a car wreck, we want, oh God, oh God. But how many know it's a lot better to have a relationship with God before you meet, yet you're crying out to him in the emergency room. God says he honors those who honor him, and hear this, and those who despise him, he will lightly esteem. He doesn't say he doesn't love you. He doesn't say he hates you. He just will lightly esteem you. You won't be on his top 10 list. I'd like my prayers to be answered. I'd like God to hear my voice. Because why? Because I honor him. How many know all of us could honor God more? Amen? I don't think anyone says, oh, I honor God with all my... At times, but there's times we don't honor him. Right? There's some people that didn't honor God today, stayed home for this something happened today. I don't remember what's happening anything going on? You know, some people, right, you know, didn't come to church because of a little pigskin, right? <laughs> kind of weird. We're not even supposed to like pigs, right? But anyways, um, I don't know. I don't think it's pigskin anymore, but anyway. The other verse that I really believe is true is Proverbs 16, 7. And this is especially true if you've noticed anything called Al-Qaeda, right? They're very loving, you know, peace-loving people. It's not a religion of hate, right? But uh, what does this say? When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he will make even his what? Enemies to live at peace with him. Now, I don't know about you, but I have, I don't know if it's just my good looks and people are jealous of me, but that's a joke. But um, some people have disliked me over the years. I've had some, I've even had some death threats a few times, believe it or not. But how many know this? The Bible says that if my ways are pleasing the Lord, he'll make even my enemies. Not saying I won't have enemies, right? Jesus had enemies and he was perfect. But he says, I'll make even your enemies to live at peace with you. How many know we need that as Americans today? We need to have the favor of God. We need to please God to where God will make our enemies. They'll still dislike us and call us a great Satan, but they won't really attack us because why? The favor of God. God's hand is keeping them at bay because we are pleasing to him. I want to tell you this. I've learned this, and, and I don't know, I don't want to bring up too much of my stuff, but like I said, my wife's sick. But how many know our temptation is to go read a new Christian book on healing? Our temptation is to go to the best doctor. Our temptation is to do all this stuff, and I'm not saying that's wrong, hear me, but I feel like God has been saying to me, and I believe to my wife, seek first the king. Me, I'm the healer. I'm the answer. Amen? Amen? Yeah. And I'm not saying, don't hear me, oh, so you don't go to doctors, just let her die. No, I'm saying is, but let's make sure we're hearing what God's counsel is. And so many times, I realize, you know what I think the issue is, and I'm going to say this later, but hear this. The reason we run to books, the reason we run to hear sermons, the reason we run to so many things, because how many know, to hear the voice of God takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of time. And I love what, what Alan Pegg said, that the Chinese, the little humble Chinese Christians, they love God because they don't have a lot of distractions. But when those kids go to the big city of Beijing, they what? They become like us, Americans. They get distracted. Not always, but a lot of times, and they get caught up in the world just like us. How I many know Paul pr said we need to pray to live a peaceful, quiet life? Now, his life was anything but peaceful and quiet, or you know, peaceful but not quiet. But hear this. We need to cut out the distractions. And when you hear something like cancer, how I many know life gets real simple? You realize there's, there's not a, you know what I mean? There's a lot of fluff that I don't need to worry about, you know? Now, these windows would freak me out, but, you know, that doesn't really mean a whole, as long as they don't fall on you, it doesn't bother me. Really? It doesn't bother me because I've got bigger things to deal with, bigger 
things to hear. But hear this, guys. Let's get to be people that hear the voice of God, that can really wait on God, that can really hear God speak to us. I love what Henry Blackaby said. How many know Henry Blackaby? You know, um, experiencing God. And this other pastor heard him say the same thing, great man of God. He said, I read the Bible until God speaks to me. Amen. Now, how many of us do our one-year Bible? Just read the Bible. I did it. Stamp it. I did it. I'm good. These men say they read the Bible until God speaks to them. And here's the thing that you're going to love it if you have a job. You, know, you love this. He says, sometimes he can speak to me in one chapter or one couple verses, but sometimes it takes 20 chapters. But what do some of us say? I got a job. I don't want to get up that early. Now, I'm not saying you have to do it in the morning. I think it's important. I think it's good. But I mean, the key is, do you hear the heart, though? Hear from God. Don't just read the word just to read the word, but read the word. Remember what Jesus said? You read the scriptures. You study the scriptures. You think that you have eternal life in the scriptures. But the, the scriptures reveal what? Me. See Jesus in the scriptures. Hear God speak to you through the scriptures. Amen. Wait on him, because when he speaks to you, guess what? He gives you hope. And hope in the Bible is not like hope, I hope I win the lottery, (laughs) right? That's a very small hope. But it's a hope of, I love this, it's a joyful expectation of the coming good. I have hope for my wife. I have hope in God that he's going to turn, work this together for good, and I can have peace in that, amen? but I will get more hope if I hear a word from God of what he's saying about the situation. Amen? You guys seem really excited. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. All right, <laughs> I'll say it for myself. All right, verse, verse 17. Then Daniel went to the ha- his house and made, a decision known, made the decision known to Hananiah, Michelle, Azariah, and his, and his companions. Verse 18. That, that they might seek mercies from God of heaven. I like that. Seek mercies from God of heaven, the God of heaven, concerning this secret, the secret dream, so Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. What do you bet that Daniel and his friends had a powerful prayer meeting that night? What do you bet they weren't going, Lord, we just, thank you. What do you bet they were, what do you bet there was some zeal in that prayer? When you're praying for your life, I bet you you're a little passionate. What if I said, you don't pray good, I'm killing you. You're going to, oh, God, I love, oh, Jesus, bless you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Right? You'll get charismatic. Right? Some of you Baptists will be like, oh, hallelujah. Right? If you know you're a dead man, if you don't hear from God, you will cry out. And now we know that's the way we should be all the time. We should pray like we mean it. We shouldn't just pray like, hey, you know, I used to tease, can I tease my girl? I got to tease my little Mariah. So everyone say, hi, Mariah. We love Mariah, right? But Mariah, she does this when she prays. She'll sometimes, she'll go, Lord, and uh, we just, um, just, um, Lord, we just um, love you, just, um. and my little girl Trinity said, what is that, just um beaver? <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, but just um, you know, and, and, I'm, and I, I love my girl, so don't go, oh, God, he's so mean. I love her. But uh, you hurt the ones you love. But hear this. The just um, how many know when you're praying for your life, you will get rid of the just ums. You'll get rid of the, oh, Lord, or, you know, hey, what a, you, know, uh, you know, just kind of saying, oh, yeah. you'll pray with some passion. I love what Leonard Ravenhill said. He said this. He said he's a great revivalist of old, radical man of God, radical. Some people don't like him, but I love him. He said God doesn't answer prayer. Wow. He says, God doesn't answer prayer. He answers desperate prayer. Amen? China, people are desperate. God wants to know you want it. You mean it. He wants to know you're not just, hey, you know, I don't care if you do it, whatever. But I re- when you are desperate, God answers. Amen. It's kind of like I always say, I don't like to associate God with a rock song. But there's an old rock song that says, I want you to want me. God wants you to want him. God wants you to really love him. Amen. And to say, God, if you don't come through, there is no answer. How many know, with cancer, how many know, the really, how, does anyone really trust doctors a whole lot? No. If you're a doctor, God, God, I'm sorry. But you know, but come on, they're human. But how many know the great physician Jesus is perfect every time? So we need to trust in him. Amen. They needed to have a revelation from God. They needed to know this secret dream that only Nebi knew. And they needed to know it from God. 
So they desperately prayed for his wisdom, for God's wisdom. And here it is. James 1.5 says this. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Now hear that. That's what God's been speaking to me this week. I go to men. I rush to go hear men tell me things. I have pastor friends. I rush to hear. And God says, hello. Isn't it funny? It'd be like me. It'd be like my son has a relationship with me, but he goes to other people to talk about what my dad thinks. How many know God wants to talk to, I would like to talk to my son about what I think. And how many know God would like us to talk to him about what he thinks rather than going to other people all the time. Now hear me, again, I know some people go, oh, so, you can't ever, so we shouldn't listen to you then. I'm not saying that. I'm saying pastors are good, right? Yeah. They are, right? And teachers are good. But how many know you need to hear from God also? You need to. And I want to say this. How many of us actually get away when we have a hardship? when we have cancer, when we have a struggle with our job, when we have a, a, a loved one who's fallen away from God or a son or a daughter, how many of us get away with God and say, God, I don't, you know, I'm not saying to go away for months. I'm saying get away, go up to the mountains, go somewhere, or maybe in your inner room, you know, prayer closet, and just cry out and say, God, what is the answer for this? What do I do? I need your wisdom. I don't know what to do with my son or daughter. What do I do? What do I do about this? You know, I don't know if you've ever dealt with cancer, but the doctor's like, and they're like, do this, and this, and you're like, and you're just, it's like a runaway train, and you're just like riding on the back. How many know, I need to know clarity, what to, well, my wife does, but we need to know what to do. Should we go to this doctor? Should we do it this way? Should we do radiology or radiation, or should we do, you know, whatever, whatever? Or should we do this? And how many know, God knows what we should do. But I will humbly say to you, <laughs> to my shame, I'm so busy doing the work of God a lot of times that I don't have time to seek the God of the work. How many know that's pretty sad? And I know if it's true for me, I think it might be true for some of you. Or at least the first service. <laughs> we don't have a first service. So. But anyways, you know, we used to. I can't blame a lot of it anymore. But you know my point so let's get away. When you have something, turn to God. Don't turn to TV. How many, how many know? A lot of times I, I get frustrated. I come home. I just want to turn on, you know, I don't have TV. I don't have cable. But I turn on a little house in the prairie to see the good old days. And how many know it's nice to watch the good old days, but how many know the days aren't good like that anymore? So I need to pray for God. I, that doesn't really help me. It makes me feel good for a second, but it's not reality. Right? And uh, anyway. Nebuchadnezzar took his problems to bed like some of us do. Daniel took his problems to God, and what a difference that makes. Amen? 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your cares and worries upon the Lord, for he cares for you. I'll tell you, I'm learning that one too. Because I'll tell you, did any of you ever get short with your wife or husband? Anyone get cranky? Or I'm the only human here, right? Why? Because we hear this. I heard a pastor say it this week. You say, you're not supposed to listen to other pastors. <laughs> but I heard a pastor say this week, you either move in love predominantly or we move in fear. Do you know what makes me cranky? Fear. What's going to happen? And then if someone, the window's going, whoa, everything's falling apart. <laughs> Anyone ever feel like that? You know? And I mean, our government just gives us immense peace. I mean, you can look everywhere and you go, is anything sane? And I know God is, but I don't feel real close to him. But hear this, God is sane. But we have to stay close to him to have that peace in the midst of an insane world. Amen? Amen? Verse 19. Then the secret, or the secret dream, was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Now, some people say, was this a dream or was this a vision? Scholars kind of go back and forth on it. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. I like that. He got the interpretation. He saw it from God. First thing he does, he doesn't go, help, oh, let's show off and tell the king. He first blesses God. Isn't that good? He blesses God. I'll tell you, when I see, I know you guys get mad at me for this, but this is why you know, I keep this church in a manageable size. But you know, when I see people just kind of, when I see people worshiping like this, Man, you are awesome in this place. Mighty God. I mean, 
that doesn't snap my shorts. And I don't think it snaps God's shorts. And, and, and people say, hey, God looks at the heart. How do you know this? Never hokey pokey. If you're happy and you know it, your face should surely show it. Right? I, I just don't think, how many, I don't think you'd be doing that in heaven. What do you bet? You're probably not going to be, Lord, you're, you're just awesome. Just totally rad. Go God. You're going to be, woo! I mean, it's going to be the sound of many rushing waters. It's going to be loud. It's going to be exuberant. And if it's going to be that way in heaven, why would we want to try to learn that here? So it's not like, whoa, this is shocking. Why not start it here so we're good for heaven? Amen? Right? Unless you don't plan on going to heaven. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So yeah. He is really a stinker today. No. I had a lot of caffeine this morning. I don't know what happened. I just, I had this, I bought this new tea and I drank a lot. And so I feel a little runaway here. But anyways, when Daniel received the answer, he didn't run out right away to save the life of those in jeopardy. No, he first stopped, as I said, and blessed the God of heaven. I like that. Verse 20, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Verse 21, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Verse 22, he reveals, the, uh, reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. Verse 23, I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. Don't you like that? You've made known to us what we ask. What does James also say? You have not because you ask not. If we can't even ask, spend the time to ask, how can we expect to receive? You know what? You know what? I love a verse that says in Psalms, be still and know that I'm God. Do you know what that means? It means be still, but it also means be still and let me be God. Let me speak to you. Let me minister to you. And sometimes we're so busy living the life, we forget to really live life. Amen? We're busy doing stuff, and we forget that the real point of life is two main things. What? Love God and love those around you with his love. That's it. Right? It isn't about the biggest house. It isn't about the nicest car. It's not about the vacation home. It's about loving God and loving those around you. Daniel stopped and offered praise before he went out to save lives of the other soothsayers. And these guys, you could have said, well, let them die. But he's, like, he's going to save them. God's going to save them through them. I think that this is an, a valuable lesson for us to learn today. So often the Lord shows us something or gives us some revelation, and we can't wait to get out and tell someone. We can't wait to get going. But in reality, before we run out, we should slow down, we should look up, and we should worship and give thanks to God. Amen. I'll tell you, you know, I love it. Some people, once someone said once, great men are grateful men. Great men are grateful men. And I'll tell you, who do you like to be around? Do you like to be around? Or do you like to be around guys that, hey, how you doing? How many like the grandpa with the candy? Hey, how you doing? I mean, you want to be a joyful person. People want to be around people that are full of the joy of the Lord. And that comes from being, I believe, a thankful person. Because guess what? You're saying, God, Daniel's in a hard situation, right? His life is on the line. But he said, God, you showed me. He waited on God. And then guess what? He praised God. He said, you are the answer. Yours, what, you are what's saving me. And I give you all the credit. I give you all the thanks. And what does God do? He honors those who honor him. I remind of the ten lepers. Is, is Raul Reese? How many know Raul Reese? Does anyone know Raul Reese? The leopards. He says for lepers. The lepers. The leopards. But anyways, the ten lepers in Luke 17, 15, Jesus told them to go on their way and show themselves to priests. And as they went, I like this, they were healed. They weren't healed immediately, but as they obeyed Jesus, they listened to his voice, obeyed him, they were healed on the way. Hear this. All ten rejoiced, but only one out of the ten, only one came back and thanked the Lord. And because he came back, he says, weren't all, weren't all ten healed? 
How many know you can be healed by God? You can be touched by a miracle and still not give your life to God completely. I never forget hearing about the Catherine Coleman meetings and, and this person, uh, Jamie Buckingham, was writing about it and he said that this, these, he said 10 people were healed of tuberculosis and he went and checked, he looked at, he interviewed them and he said, hey, are you, did you give your life to Christ tonight? And they said, no. And he goes, are you going to give your life to Christ? And they said, no. How many of you can be touched by God and still not surrender your life to God? Isn't that amazing? But here this person came back and thanked the Lord, and he says, here's what Jesus says to him, you are made whole, the King James, the old King James says, you're made whole. And Jesus said to him, all the ten were healed, but only one came back and worshipped, and, and that person who worshipped and thanked God was made whole, which speaks not of just wholeness of body, but of wholeness of spirit and soul. That person's for sure saved. That person is whole in Christ. How many know, what does it mean to have the perfect body and lose your soul in the strife? He was healed and made whole spiritually. How many like that? That's, that's good healing. Amen. Not just body, but also soul and spirit. Because why? He came back and thanked God. When the others were too busy, probably running around telling all their friends. I want to ask us this question. Are we sadly sometimes like the nine? Are we like the nine lepers who just kind of get touched by God and run out and go tell everyone, but God, thank you? Or are we like the one? I don't know about you, I want to be like the one, amen? I want when I'm touched by God or hear something from God, I don't want to tell everyone, hey, my wife's healed, ah! I want to be the first one to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Not run out and tell everyone, because you know what I think? <laughs> Can I just say this? <laughs> I think, you know, as a pastor, sometimes we want miracles and we want revival and we want all these things, but you know what I think? We want it because of our low self-esteem. We don't really want it because we really want people touched. And how many know God doesn't do miracles just so I can feel good about myself? God does miracles because he cares about you guys. He does miracles. He, want, he wants to do miracles through us because he cares. Remember it says every time he moved with a miracle, he was moved with compassion almost. You hear it? How many know we need to care about the lost people around us? And when we care about them, then as Jesus sees our, his love being poured out through us, then he's going to also pour out his spirit in miracles through us in revival and awakening. I, I don't like revival because sometimes revival we feel, like, ooh, ooh, right? It's a, just an exciting meeting. We need an awakening in America, Amen. an awakening back to God. And we need to see a move of the Spirit again, done in spirit and truth. We need to see that. But guess what? It comes when we as the people of God love God, but also love people with his love. Does that make sense? Are we like the one? I want to be like the one who came back and thanked God. I like Daniel because he wasn't just a prayer warrior, as we see, but he was also a worshiper. How many know we need to be both, prayer warrior and worshiper? You know, a lot of times our flesh will say things like this, but, but, but that's not efficient. We don't have time to worship and pray. We've got things to do. People are dying. Time's running out. You don't have time to pray and worship. Guys, I want to tell you today, that's the voice of Judas. That's the voice of the devil. As Mary, remember the story, offered her alabaster box, her wedding dowry of perfume that was worth a year's wages, up to a year's wages. That's a lot of money. And she broke it at Jesus' feet, and she wiped his hair, or his feet with her hair and tears. And, and, and you just, what? And you know, here's Judas, what waste? And what did Jesus say? The poor you always have with you. How I many know you don't always get to Bless Jesus' feet. You don't always get to hear from God like we want to, but when you do, we should stay there for a moment. Mary offered the alabaster box of oil, and Judas said that money could have been used for something much better. It could have been used to feeding the poor. How I many know it's good to feed the poor? But it's also very good to worship God. Amen. Don't put one before the other. But Jesus said, what she's doing shall be spoken of throughout the world wherever this gospel is preached. Mark 14, 9. 
How many like to be like that? Where Jesus says, hey, come over here. Look at these people. Watch these people. They worship me. Look at this. That's what he's saying. She is marked because she gave her all. Now, how many of you know this? You know, I can barely get a lot of you to tithe. You got quiet there, didn't you? Look at But how many know, can you imagine laying a year's wages at Jesus' feet? That's worship. That's extravagant love to where even Satan and demons and Judas, what? But God says, awesome. I don't know about you, I like our worship where God goes, awesome. Because God says he inhabits the praises of you. How many would like to experience God's presence in worship? Not just sing and go, kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya, my lord. You know, I mean, I would like to, I remember the grace days when I was at Grace Chapel in this town. And I went there as a Baptist boy. And I'm sitting there going, here's my openness to God. And all of a sudden, we're, we're singing and we're singing, holy, holy lord. And all of a sudden, I'm like, <laughs> and I started weeping. And all of a sudden, my antennas went up. And I'm like, what is going on? It was amazing. And I wept, and I wept, and I wept because I just sensed the presence of God. How many like to see that? Some of you go, some of you macho men. No, I would not like to see that. How many know God would like to see that in you? (laughs) You might not want to see it, but God would like to see you broken before him. That's what Mary was doing. She was weeping, wiping his feet with her hair. And he didn't go, get off me. What are you doing? Woman, it. I got busy. He was like, this is awesome. This is amazing. Guys, God loves those who are thankful and those who worship him in spirit and truth. Those who worship him with all their heart. Like Daniel, Mary was a worshiper. And the Lord commended her for all eternity for that. I would like to be in that realm. I'd like to be in that camp of known as by God as a worshiper of him. Amen. And I like this church to be that. Verse 24. Therefore Daniel went to Arioch, whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Take me before the king, and I will tell the king the interpretation. Verse 25. Arioch quickly brought Daniel before the king and said this to him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah who will make known to the king the interpretation. Verse 26, the king answered and said to Daniel, whose name is Belteshazzar, I can never say that right, are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? Verse 27, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, The astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers cannot declare to the king. I love this. Hear this. Verse 28. But there is a God in heaven. Amen? Amen. There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, who knows your thoughts, who knows what's going on. There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and has made known to the king, known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed were these, and he's going to say it, and we're going to do that for next week, but hear this. Daniel didn't say, I'll tell you, my dream. I, I'm the man. I'm better than all your astrologers or all your soothsayers. I got the interpretation. He said, only the Lord can give you this information. Only God knows the secret things. And this understanding that you seek comes only from God. I believe with all of my heart that this is why Daniel was used so mightily by the Lord. He was a young man. He was used from 15 years of age. Think about it. He's 15 years old. How many like to have your, your young 15-year-old be so godly that he can go to a foreign country called the U of A and be strong? <laughs> How many would you like that? Do you understand? Where he doesn't get tempted with all kinds of junk and say, hey, I believe in evolution now, but he can stand strong. How many know? That's a, these kids are solid in God. And I tell you, we need to get young men like that again and women that are solid. Amen? Yeah. But because he was solid in God, he stayed the course. He was humble. He was used from 15 to 85 or maybe 90. Because here's the reason, one of the keys, I believe, he didn't take the credit. 
I believe the reason why God can't bless us as much as he'd like to, because sometimes how many of blessings can ruin us, right? If we got all the wealth we desired, if we got all the promotion we desired, how many know it's easy for us to forget God? But if God can trust us to remember to bless the blesser, then guess what? God will bless us. But he'll never give you something that will hurt you. Amen? Amen. The fastest way to see the work of God in your life stop or kind of diminish is to begin to think that you're so special. To think that you're all that in a box of chocolates. I'll tell you what, God is, I always joke and say, Jeff likes this, God has been faithful to beat the Craig out of me. Because I used to think, well, I guess I still probably do, but it's less and less. I thought more highly of myself than I ought, as the Bible says. Anyone out there ever think more highly? Anytime you go, I can't believe they did that to me, you're thinking more highly than you should. Because guess what? You're a servant. Does a servant have rights? When you say, how dare they treat me? Do they know who I am? You're a servant of the Most High God, so yeah, you should be a servant, right? 1 Peter 5, 6 says this, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. As Calvaryites say a lot of times, the way up in the kingdom is down. And the way down in the kingdom is up. And you go, what? Exalt yourself and God will put you down. Humble yourself. Say, God, I'll do whatever. I'll even teach Sunday school. Really? I'll even usher. I'll even maybe clean the church bathroom. And guess what God says? Exalt. The Bible says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. But a lot of times we have, I've done, we've done the thing where we say, write out what you'll do. And we say, people say, we'll sign up. And some people say, I'll do anything. Then you ask them to do anything, teach Sunday school. Well, anything but Sunday school. Then you go, okay, maybe Sunday school is not that. Would you clean the bathrooms? Anything but the bathrooms. Okay, would you usher? Anything but usher. And pretty soon you go, so what is anything? I will teach, us, I will teach adult Sunday school. That's not anything. Right? How many, well, some of you go, I don't want to teach. But how many, there's a lot of people that like to teach. There really is. That's not a problem. But how many, bathroom ministry, that's a needed ministry. Right? Let's be those people like Daniel that are humble, that God can work powerfully through, and where we give God all the credit and glory. I want to read this as today's Communion Sunday. I want us to hear this of the most humble man that ever walked the earth. Moses said he was one of the most humble, but I believe Jesus beat him. Philippians 2.6. It's talking about Jesus. It says, though he was God, he did not think equality with God something to cling to. Remember the, the kenosis. He emptied himself of his divine power. He was still divine, but he, he kind of turned off his divine power switch. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave or servant and was born as a human being. Do you imagine what it's like to be God and then become a human? It's like us becoming a ant or worse. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Hear this. Here's the point. Verse 9. Therefore God exalted him or elevated him to the place of highest honor. All of us here would like to be, have a place of honor, but God says the way to get it is by humbling yourself, by saying, God, I'll do whatever is needed, whatever is needed. He says, therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, verse 10, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, I love this, in heaven and earth and under the earth, verse 11, and every tongue Declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Don't you love that your Savior didn't ask you to do anything that he didn't do? He asked you to humble himself. He asked you to die to yourself. And he did it even more. It says while we were yet sinners, that means when we could care less, Christ died for us. How many know very few of us would die, as Jesus said, for a good man, for a good woman? 
But Jesus died for you and I when we didn't care. When we didn't even know our need for God. He loved you. Isn't that amazing? While they were mocking him, he said, Father, forgive them. For they know. I mean, I don't know about you. I think I would have called those legions of angels. Take them out. But that's why he's God and I'm not. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the worship team is going to play a song. Worship team, you guys here? We're going to pass out the, the elements, the bread and the juice. Just hold it in your hand, and then we will take communion together. Hear this. All we ask is this is open communion, is that you're saved. If you're not saved, probably maybe you should then get saved right now. But we ask that you're saved, and that if you have any unconfessed sin in your life, that you would just take this moment to just ask the Lord, is there anything in my life, or if you know of any sin, just confess it to him. Just put it under the blood, amen? Because the Bible talks in 1 Corinthians 11 about taking communion in a worthy manner, and he says, because of that, many of you are weak and sick and even sleep, which means death. I don't think anyone wants to leave here dead, right? So get right, confess your sins, get, remember the blood, remember the body that was broken for you, and confess those sins, and we will take communion in remembrance of God, amen?